if you wish to live your life to its fullest potential and do something meaningful and impactful in the world do ensure that you don't allow your mind to harbor hatred towards anyone these thoughts of bitterness they devastate our body and poison our mind I was once counseling a man who had been estranged from his brother whom he felt had hurt him deeply and on that day he started recalling the wrongs his brother had done to him now that kept on increasing the bitterness within his heart until he literally began trembling in hatred and then blurted out to me swami ji look what my brother has done to me i allowed a few moments to go by so that he would calm down a bit and then said look what you have done to yourself the brother may have done wrong it could have been forgotten about and life could have continued but by harboring hatred he had hurt himself these thoughts of hatred are bitter sweet on one side they work like poison on the other side the material mind relishes them for they reinforce the ego that guy is so bad who has hurt me and I am so good. In fact, the material mind is so expert that it even relishes the bitterness in a tamasic way. Now, these thoughts of hatred could be directed towards a boss who behaved badly or a lover who betrayed you or towards people from another race. whom we feel are threatening the quality of our life such an example was illustrated by dr brian wise he is a psychotherapist and hypnotherapist in america who got his professional training in cornell university he specializes in past life regression and has written the best selling many lives many masters being born in the jewish tradition initially dr wise did not believe in the rebirth of the soul but he was once counseling a young lady called catherine and using hypnotherapy he regressed her to her childhood to understand if there was any childhood trauma that was affecting her present behavior now catherine got regressed into her past life and it seems that she was connected in her past life to dr wise in his present life and she began relating episodes that astounded him how did she come to know he then did past life regressions on thousands and based on his experience he wrote many many books in fact he can be accorded the credit for popularizing the concept of reincarnation of the soul from lifetime to lifetime in the western world one case study of his really caught my attention a patient whom he had regressed in his past life was a christian and he hated the muslims consequently in his next life he was born in the muslim faith and then he hated the jews and in his next life 
he became a Jew. Now this is so interesting. The conclusion is that if you wish to be born in a particular religious group, the easiest way is to start hating them. God says, you are not supposed to hate. And if you fill your heart with that bitterness, I will make arrangements to ensure that you rise above it. So, we need to stay away from this vicious trap of hatred. Why does hatred arise at all? Let's read about it from my latest book, The Power of Thoughts. Now come to the crucial question. Why does hatred develop? The answer is that hate develops just as attachment does. When we repeatedly ruminate, this object gives me misery. This object is harmful to me. The chain of negative musings solidifies as bitterness. Again, let us see how the brain cooperates with the mind in creating hatred. Repetition of thought causes synaptic plasticity to kick in. The consequence is neural learning in the direction of negativity. Networks develop in the brain to facilitate further repetition of the particular negative idea. Consequently, the bitter thought impinges frequently upon our mind and the state of loathing achieves perpetuity. There was once a snake that entered a home improvement store after working hours when it had been shut down. In the dark while the snake was moving around, it got clipped by a saw. That filled the snake with venom, bitterness, and it bit the saw only to find its own mouth getting cut. And that increased the hatred within the snake towards the saw. It then wrapped itself around the saw to suffocate it to death. But in the process, it got cut so badly that the snake died itself. Now, in hating the saw, the snake was hurting itself. That exactly is how life works. We do in this journey come across difficulties, challenges and disappointments. They are to be faced in a proactive manner. Which means if you can solve them, do so. If you cannot, then tolerate them. But instead of that, when we become bitter about circumstances and people who have hurt us, that hatred is like poison to our body and mind. Now, the Vedic scriptures treat attachment and hatred in the same light. The Yoga Darshan states, Sukhanushai Ragaha Dukhanushai Dvesha. Why does attachment develop? Because of the contemplation of happiness somewhere. And why does hatred develop? Because of the repetition of bitter thoughts towards some place or person. If there is either attachment or hatred, that object will repeatedly impinge upon the mind, 
there by dirtying it. If you wish to be the possessor of a pure mind, brimming with goodness, full of virtue, serene, tranquil and pure, ensure that it is free from attachment and hatred to all material things and then you can lift it in the spiritual flight to the divine heights. Thank you.